Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about some major cultural factors of Africa. Obviously, Africa is the second largest continent in the world and there are over 50 countries within that continent. So when we're talking about cultural factors, we're, we're talking about cultural trends. What can we sort of look at um, as an overview and what can we take away from it? I'll talk a little bit about how those uh, trends can look different in different parts of the continent. But um, we're sort of trying to paint a backdrop because the way this unit works is that most of the um, most of the digging into specific countries is going to come from your guys' presentations, which means that my job is to sort of give you some background information and some tools that you can then take and look at how they show up in your specific country. All right, so the first um, important cultural thing that we're going to look at is art. Art is important in every culture. It's important in uh, North American culture, in Asian culture, in all of these things. And we are going to look at how it looks in African cultures. Obviously, there's variation in this. It's going to look different in different countries and different subcultures. But we do see some trends that hold pretty consistent throughout. And one of those is this idea of stylized realism, where you get um, things that look human or they're based on a realistic figure. Um, so you're not necessarily dealing with like fairies or imagined things, but it is stylized. So you have things that are elongated or emphasized. Uh, you play with the reality just a little bit. And the idea behind it is that by emphasizing these different things, you end up with pictures that have this um, greater vitality or power or boldness that um, you're trying to capture more than just the real picture, but you're trying to capture uh, the energy or sort of the, the liveliness of uh, that thing. So with the giraffes, giraffes have long necks and long legs, so you emphasize that even more in the picture. Obviously, you see variation even in the pictures that I have on the slide. None of them look the same, but you do see some similar characteristics between them all. Another thing that is pretty common to see throughout the continent in different areas in different ways is art that uses geometric figures. And you see this on a lot of traditional art. Um, here you have various masks, um, but this idea of repeating geometric shapes and patterns, uh, certain colors being used, um, that is also pretty traditional. Another idea that comes up a lot in African art is this idea of youth. We talked about this a little bit with stylized realism, how by emphasizing certain body parts or exaggerating certain body parts, you can create uh, a greater idea of vitality or motion in the picture. And a lot of people think this might go back to hunting times when um, in order to have a successful um, tribe or town, you had to have enough people in that town or tribe who were physically fit and could hunt for you and defend your um, your area. And you see this a lot in art. You see the picture of the three women. You might not think of it as a young picture, but you definitely would get sort of this youthful energy from that picture. Another thing that we're going to talk about is music. Music also is important in every culture, and so we're going to look at it in African culture. Um, when we look at African music sort of as a whole, we tend to see eight major characteristics that show up in some combination in pretty much every area of African traditional music. So the first one is polyrhythms, and that basically is a fancy word that means there's multiple rhythms going at once. In a lot of Western music, you have a simple beat and then everything is um, sort of coming out of that beat. Whereas in African music, you often have multiple percussive instruments going at once and they're not playing the same rhythm. Ostinato is a repeating musical pattern. It might be a musical line. It might be a certain riff. Um, and we have that in our music too, but it is especially uh, relevant in a lot of traditional African music. Use of percussion. Obviously, if you're going to have polyrhythms, percussion is probably pretty important. They use a lot of different types of percussive instruments, um, a very wide variety, which is pretty cool. And with all of that percussion, 
there is often what is called a background shimmer, which basically means that there is almost always some sort of noise going on. It's not necessarily the rhythm of the song. It's not necessarily even creating music, but there is some little uh, shaking sound in the background, some sort of buzzing or rattling, um, just sort of to create this larger uh, sound, this larger atmosphere of whatever the song is trying to say. Number five, there's a close connection between music and language. I'm not just talking about between the music and the lyrics. I'm talking about music and language itself. So the pitch of a song is often meant to represent spoken syllables and form a sort of speech. It's not necessarily um, like um, now that person is speaking, now they're singing. Um, there's a lot closer of a connection between those two which is not something that we see in a lot of Western music. Number six, participatory. Music is something that everybody does. The idea is that it is a communal event. It's not someone is standing there performing. This is not opera, right? But there's a close connection within the performing arts in a lot of African culture. So music performance is a type of poetry and it might include singing and dancing, you're very rarely just going to see someone singing by themselves. Going along with that, a lot of their music is responsorial. So not only will you very rarely see someone just standing in the corner singing, but this is where um, you might think of a lot of gospel music as responsorial, where there might be a person leading the singing, but then there's supposed to be a group response and that might be um, sung or it might be instrumental but it's this idea of in this song we are all coming together to create music as one all right i'm going to play you a short clip of some traditional african music and i just want you to pay attention how you can hear um, different rhythms and some of the uh, musical things that we just talked about All right, history and storytelling. Storytelling is very important um, throughout the African continent, which is why we can talk about it as an overview. Obviously, different places have different stories, but the purpose and even sometimes the format of the stories is pretty similar. So storytelling in African culture has been a way of passing on traditions and codes of behavior and sort of maintaining social order um, almost across the board. We talked about this a little bit with Greek mythology and stuff, but um, stories are used as a way to answer important life questions. Like how did we get here? How should we live? Um, where are we going? Stuff like that. All right, cultural trends. Now we are going to get into the actual cultural factors. Um, and basically what I have done here is I've gone through the countries and um, the ones that there have been research about and sort of boil down what is the majority culture in Africa and is there a difference between different regions? And I try to touch on that a little bit. All right, first of all, cultural trends in Africa, not true of every country. Number one, collectivist. A lot of African countries are collectivist with the exception of South Africa, which is very individualistic. So throughout most of the continent, you have a lot of small communities that work together for the good of the whole. However, 
Um, South Africa is like super individualistic. And part of that is very likely because of the intense influence of Western cultures in South Africa. You remember apartheid and just how um, dominated by European powers South Africa was. Also, higher power distance, most communities expect leaders to make decisions for the whole, and they expect certain figures to hold more authority. Um, this is supposed to be kind of a beneficial partnership between, you know, an authority figure and the community. They're supposed to be beneficial um, leaders. Once again, South Africa is a very strong outlier. All right, I don't know if we have talked about um, feminine societies very much, but Africa is pretty mid-level level when it comes to uh, masculine or feminine societies, but most countries tend to lean um, more feminine, except Ethiopia and South Africa, which tend to be more masculine. Basically, a lot of the communities tend to be more motivated by collaboration rather than competition. Com competition is the more masculine side, which is where Ethiopia and South Africa fall. Uncertainty avoidant. This one is a little bit more split north to south rather than having a few countries that are significant outliers to it. But um, Northern Africa tends to be very uncertainty avoidant, whereas once you get past um, the Congo and then south of that, Africa tends to be a little bit more uncertainty tolerant. Last one, short-term orientation. So this is the idea of the world is as it was created and there is less of this idea of um, preparing for the future. You are, you learn from the past, it's a moral compass, but you don't necessarily need to keep changing what you're doing. Um, and so this is very, very evident in Northern Af Africa, especially along the Northern border. Um, and it's also evident in a lot of their stories, right, where you use stories of the past to provide you a moral compass for the future. All right, that was a brief flyby of some major cultural trends of the African continent. I would definitely encourage you guys as you are doing your research for your specific countries to look at your country's art. See if it, um, if you can see some of these cultural trends in there, see if it's an outlier, just check it out, um, see what you can learn. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.